Welcome everyone to another episode of My Week in Lego. Thank you for tuning in. And also, thank you for all of the positive feedback in last week's episode, which happened to be my first. It's always a little scary when you put something new out to the world or you change directions because you're never quite sure how your audience is gonna receive it. So I wanna thank you for all of the encouragement that I saw in the comments from last week's episode. I think My Week in Lego is officially gonna become a thing. Speaking of last week, I kind of sneaked you guys a little bit with a tease on a set that I ordered from Amazon. Clarkman was building the Spider-Man set that I showed last week, and when he got to the end of the manual, Lego captured him by advertising another set to him that I had looked over for a while, but as I was looking at it there, I was like, you know what? That set is pretty cool. I wonder if it's available. And it just so happened to be that Amazon had it for 20% off that day. It literally went on sale that day. So it kind of felt like to me, it was meant to be. So we ordered that set, haven't had a chance to open it, but I feel like my week in Lego, we can make this a haul too, right? We can do whatever we want here. Hopefully you guys like that. But inside here, we got the set in question that maybe somebody waited a week to find out. This, of course, is 76174. This is Spider-Man's monster truck versus Mysterio. And as a now seven-year-old, how could you not like this set? You have monster trucks. That's an instant win for any kid. Also Mysterio. Clark wanted the Mysterio minifig, and I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure that we already have him, but it was in a set that I built before we moved, so it's in the storage room of Doom, which is right behind you guys right now. I feel the power of it coming over me right now. So this set will be an opportunity to get him, build a monster truck. This is typically a $40 set. Oh, did I even mention the coolest thing? It shoots a web. It shoots a web from the top, so it's very playable, as is pretty much any vehicle. You also get uh, Spider-Gwen. You also get a purple skateboard because you obviously need that in your life. What you don't need are punch tabs. We could probably live without those. But this is a $40 set. Amazon had it for $32. I should have done a deal detect post on it. I asked you guys in a community post, what do you prefer? Would you prefer me to post deals as just like community posts or make videos on it? And most people, they prefer just a post. They don't want to sit through a video. So I'll try doing that. There hasn't been much lately uh, now that we're into January, but I'll, I'll keep you posted literally. Uh, so that was our first haul of the week, but that wasn't all. <laughs> I feel like I'm shooting an infomercial right now. Clark Man's birthday was also last week. We're running this week of Lego. I'm going to say January 2nd to January 9th. These are all arbitrary dates, but I'm just go with it. Last week was his birthday, and he happened to get a set that you may have seen me open up rather recently on here, or at least in a haul video, a massive one at that. Clark Man ended up getting... I'll just let the video roll. You guys can see it happen in real time. Oh, my Bowser's airship? Dude, this is going to take like ages. Legos. Bowser's airship. This was high on the list, eh? Um, you don't have any Legos. We can fix that. With Clark Man's birthday over and him back in school after the long holiday break, I now had an opportunity to work on things down here in the studio, other than cleaning it up, because as you can see, it's still a nightmare. Maybe next week in Lego, I'll have a little bit of a cleaner space here, and it'll become a part of the video. This is like... We keep going inception levels here. But last week I decided that I was gonna work on a Christmas gift that I got from my friend Locked Door, which happened to be the new UCS BrickTech logo. I built one in the past, which was eh, maybe about that tall. His is quite a bit taller. In fact, you can see it right up there. But I was building that up. I did it on a live stream, which was a lot of fun. And then I made a video on it. And my favorite part of the video was actually a setback that we had. And I'll find in my life that the times you have the best experiences are when things don't always go your way. And that's basically life in general, right? Like nothing always works. And what makes any movie or any story or anything awesome is the conflict contained within it. That is the main part of the reason you watch anything or listen to things. It's because of the conflict. It's not just all smooth sailing. You know, you don't just save the world and get the girl. The bad things happen first. And in this case, you know, I didn't get the girl. I already have, I have her though. I have Mrs. Brickitech. All right, let's keep this on topic. The Brickitech logo, there was an issue with it supporting itself because it's kind of at an angle a little bit and the way that Lockdoor designed it no offense Lockdoor I'm super thankful for the for the gift and for the design and everything because it made something that I could really enjoy and the thing that I enjoyed about it was coming together and trying to figure out a way that I can make this work and I did a little bit of problem solving a couple of different experiments it made a great video I thought I was really proud of it yeah, we ended up getting to work and it looks fantastic on display so I was very thankful for that and now I have a giant Brickitech logo looming over the studio and it's still up there it hasn't fallen yet 
waiting for that day. We'll do the unintentional drop test that I probably won't be filming. Maybe we should get the camera just positioned on it, and then we'll start every My Week in Lego with the Brick Tech logo cam if it's still up there. But uh, that wasn't all of the mock building this week. Clark man, the little guy went crazy over holidays. He was building all kinds of stuff. And I asked him this week if he wanted to make his own video where I wouldn't participate in it at all. I wouldn't be blabbering on like this. It would just be him talking about all the cool stuff that he made. And he was all about that life. And he shot this really cute video that I was so darn proud of that he showed off all these different Minecraft mocks he made and other little things that he had been working on. And uh, unfortunately, there was no comments on that video because the YouTube AI bots, they're like, kid alert, we can't have comments, which I understand. They're trying to protect kids from jerks out there. But I know this community and I've seen you guys, and I'm sure it would have been nothing but positive comments. And people that have reached out to me, they've said like, hey, that was really cool what Clark Man did. But that was really awesome seeing him do his thing. Although I was a little deflated afterwards because it became very apparent that at seven years old, Clark Man is a much more natural presenter to cameras than I am even at 37 years old. So there is that. In addition to making his own stuff, Clark Man also builds Lego sets. And this week, one of the sets that he started working on was the Ideas Fossil set. This is a set that we got from Brad as a part of this gigantic Christmas haul that he sent over to us. And Clark Man built the T-Rex from that. And that is a really cool model and a great set. Check out this little clip here of the T-Rex in action. Wow, look at that dude. Nice job, looked, buddy. He looks like chicken legs, now he looks like a T-Rex. Hey, he does. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's also a wolf. As the norm, Clark Man did a great job with that, and I did not such a great job with the Triceratops. I was commissioned with that build, and it didn't quite get finished because of all the other stuff I was working on, but hopefully in next week's My Week in Lego, we can show off the completed set, and I can give you our official opinion on it. So far, we get two thumbs up. Next thing that happened this week was the return of an old series or possibly the start of a new one. I decided on Saturdays I'd like to do a weekly stream where I just kind of sit down and work on something, whether it's tearing down sets, breaking it down like what happened this week, for example, or to work on something new, but each week just kind of show up, be there, get some things done, be productive, maybe build a fossil set that still needs built. But this week I decided that the more higher priority than that was to tear down some of the Christmas sets that we had built. If you guys saw back before we defeated our Christmas backlog, it was an amazing thing. But now here we are in January and those sets aren't quite as relevant anymore. So they are literally just taking up space at Baratech, which is be a great place to do projects at. And I decided that on Saturday, that was gonna be the day I started tearing stuff down. And I did that for about two hours until I just was like over it. There's still a lot more that needs to be torn down. I've got a couple of the bigger sets to do and some of the stuff that I snuck upstairs on display Cody had taken all the Christmas decorations down and it became uh, apparent that those ones need to be taken down as well so more work to do there obviously a lot of stuff to clean up here in the studio too so I literally could just do a whole week of just organizing things and that would probably be honestly the best thing that I could do, like just halt production, at least for me, and clean up. Clark, of course, can build. Speaking of that, that little weasel, you know, we built all these sets and I was tearing them down. You know what he was doing? He's in the background playing Minecraft, which, you know, is fine with me. He, he's a bit of an enthusiast if I, if you guys didn't know. But uh, yeah, we, we're just, we're just doing a whole bunch of stuff, having fun. I'm just so thankful that I'm in this position. And I talk about this all the time, especially on Missing Pieces, which, I should tell you, has moved over to Greg's world. And that was a really smart move for me, at least. Uh, I, I think, this, this again, the support there has been wonderful. I moved Missing Pieces because it's not really a Lego podcast. It, it had like a Lego base to it for a while, like a Lego base plate. Ba bad jokes, I'm done. Bad jokes, dad jokes, I'm done. I promise, at least till next episode. But it was never really a Lego podcast. It was like my life podcast. It was talked about all the things that's going on in my life. Lego, Lego, and anything else that's in my mind. And most of it was those other two things other than Lego. And after 110 episodes, I decided why not put it on the place where I actually share my life, which is Greg's world. And I put that video out yesterday. So much awesomeness in the comments there. I just can't even believe it. And also, it's been viewed by about three times the number of people that listen to Missing Pieces, which makes sense because it's a bigger channel, but I think that's the audience that really wants that content. You guys want this, I think. Like, this is 
the Lego portion of Missing Pieces. And I just, and this also did much better than Missing Pieces. So I think I have things figured out. Not to say that things can't move, things can't change. Nothing's set in concrete, you know? You can, you can move, you can, you can pivot. And you just have to hope that the people are gonna be there. And I find that when you share yourself and your personality and who you are authentically, it's very easy for people to move with you, you know? Like if, if you're not focused on any one thing, but you're just focused on being you and sharing who you are, because that's honestly all I have. That's, that's it. So uh, I was talking about something prior to talking about Missing Pieces, but it was just the perfect segue. Maybe I'll come back to it next week. I don't know what it was. Oh, Sugar Shack. Anyways, hopefully some cleanup action this week. I'll try to document some of that. We have some reviews coming for you guys. We have Bowser's Airship, of course. Clarkman literally just finished that, and I haven't had a chance to, to film him enjoying it. So we'll try to make a, like a little maybe like a little review out of it. Maybe he can share that. He also has a ton of mocks that he's going to be sharing this week too. He was so encouraged by making that video that he's, that's literally all he's doing is building stuff, which is awesome. It's really awesome. So that's my week in Lego. I hope you enjoyed the second week, the week of January 2nd, 2022, Clark Man's seventh birthday, all the way through January 9th. 2022. We'll be back with you next week with another episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you all in the next episode, or we'll find you in the next My Week in Lego.